camera's falling. What's up guys? Welcome to my first official Q&A video. It's January 2018 and what better way to start the new year than with uh, answering some of your questions. So let's do this. All right, Time and Color asked, what was the name of your first band and what kind of music was it? My first band was in seventh grade and we were called The Plague and it was 1988? 88? Was it 1988-89? We played, well, we tried to play some of the Guns N' Roses Appetite of Destruction stuff, Cream songs, because I was really into Clapton, Ozzy, I was really into Randy Rhodes too, Metallica. One of our last gigs, we tried to play one because I think Injustice for All had just come out. Here's a clip of my very first gig. That was a f***ing cool guitar. Hideous Creations asked, do you still have your very first good guitar? If so, what is it? Of course I have my very first guitar. It's gone through some changes, but this is essentially my very first guitar. It's a 1986 made in Japan Fender Strat. I changed the pickups, obviously, to DiMarzio's. So this used to have a locking tremolo, the Fender System 1 tremolo. I think it was a Schaller or a Caller. I don't know, it was one of those. I've had this since I was 10. This was basically my birthday present uh, from my parents. They got this at Marshall Music in Allen Park, Michigan, which I'm not sure if that store is there anymore. Before I got this guitar, I was playing my dad's guitar, which was a Kingston semi-hollow body that had some crazy vibrato on it. And he told me the story that he had a choice between a Gibson 335 and this Kingston, and he chose the Kingston because it had the whammy bar. Dad, Dad, why did you do that? Why? All right, Tone is Everything asks, what type of dog do you have and what is its name? Oh, hey, bud. It's Jolene. She is a Chinese crested hairless, and she runs this house, right? Who's that? Who's that? The Sebi96 asked, Stones or Beatles? While I do agree that the Beatles are one of the greatest bands of all time, but I'm a blues guy and I like rock and roll and, and the Stones are just kind of it for me. All right, let's go to everyone's favorite question. Barry asks, what strings, gauge, and picks do you use? So with strings, lately I haven't been 100% brand loyal to any particular brand because I've come to the realization that I like different strings on different guitars. But for the most part, I'm using D'Addario NYXLs. Usually 10s, but I'm all out of 10s, so this is a 9.5 pack. On some of my more vintage -y guitars, I'll put these GHS burnished nickel rockers. They feel a little more broken in and warmer. I've tried a couple packs of these uh, Gabriel Tenorio strings. These are awesome. On my jazzy guitars, I'll put flat wounds. I'll either put these Tomastic Infelds or uh, Labellas. On my new Barney Kessel, I put the George Benson Tomastic Infelds, which are 14 gauge. They are thick. Picks, I've been using these Dunlop Tortex T3s, 1.14 millimeter purple ones, and I like them because the material I like and they're very pointy, which I like for the accuracy and it helps me shred a little bit. I ordered some custom ones from Dunlop. It's the same one, but it's white caricature on one side and uh, my signature on the other side. Westwinds asked, when did you become interested in music and the guitar? Did you attend any performance schools like Berkeley or Musicians Institute? I started getting interested in music at an early age. I took piano lessons when I was six and then I started playing the drums and I started playing guitar when I was nine. I come from a musical family, my dad he plays guitar, he sings, he can play saxophone, piano. So we always had instruments around the house. I don't know if I gravitated more towards the guitar because, you know, it was the 80s and MTV was on and you would turn on the TV and it was new and fresh and appealing to my young adolescent mind. Well, I stuck with it and I did go to music school. I went to University of Miami a School of Music, which they have a very good music school there and I studied uh, studio music and jazz performance was the actual degree. A lot of great players went through that school. Andy Timmons went there briefly, Steve Morse, Pat Metheny, Jaco Pastorius, Will Lee, Bruce Hornsby. It was an awesome experience. I had great teachers. I met a lot of great friends that I continue to work with to this day. Brigitte asked, what is your top three tips on how to get from a beginner slash intermediate guitar player to a professional guitarist? I would say number three, be confident, know what you can and can't do, know your capabilities, and master what you're capable of. So let's be honest, you don't have to be a great musician these days to be a 
professional working musician. Number two, make sure your gear is in good working order. You don't need to have expensive guitars or amps or a huge pedal board. Just make sure your guitar stays in tune and your pedals and amps are in perfect working condition. Number one, I would say meet a lot of people. Be kind and friendly to them. Make a lot of friends because most likely they're gonna be the ones that are gonna call you for gigs. So Chris asked, how did you get hooked up with the people from Eastwood and how do you or they decide which instrument to demo? How did it happen? One of their models caught my eye and it was this airline tuxedo. I had contacted Eastwood to see if I could possibly get some sort of an artist discount, maybe in exchange for a demo video. This was back in 2011, I think. The video that I posted got some views and drove some traffic towards their website and kind of just hit it off from there and they've been kind enough to ask me to do some more demos over the years. They basically send me whatever new guitars are coming through the production line and I do the demos and I and that's it. Okay, James asked, imagine you're shipped off to a desert island for the rest of time and they let you take only one guitar. What guitar would you take? If you would have asked me a week ago, I would have said probably one of my tellies, but since I got this guitar, Fullerton Strat Style by Jeff Sen here in Nashville, this has become my favorite guitar. The neck is perfect, the weight is perfect, the trim stays in tune and it feels great. These pickups are, are Lawlers and they sound amazing. Olivier asks, what's your go-to amp? I think I could play 99% of my gigs comfortably with some sort of Fender style amp. For the longest time, my main recording and gigging amp was a blackface Fender Bassman head. For the past couple of years on the road, I've been taking this Morgan RCA 35. It used to be white, but now it's off-white, kind of gray. It's based on a Fender circuit. For me, Fender amps are kind of that nice baseline platform that takes pedals well. Works great with humbucker guitars or single coil guitars or P90s or whatever. They're very flexible for me. You know, I can do super clean jazz gigs with one or if I have the right pedals, I could do like a metal gig, which I, I think I have in the past. Rockabilly Rambler asks, how did you take the plunge into playing music professionally and is it a full-time only job? It is a full-time job for me. I would say my early to mid twenties is when I went full-time as a musician. I was playing in bar bands and cover bands a lot more frequently to the point where I was making more money playing these bar gigs than I was at my day job, which was selling cell phones. So when I became a full-time professional musician, I was basically playing covers four nights a week. I think playing that frequently and that often was practice in itself, so I never practice. I just played and played. R&B, dance covers, some rock, jazz. Not a lot of blues actually at that time. Eventually I got into touring because you know I was meeting lots of musicians and uh, getting recommended for certain gigs and kind of took off from there. Matthew asked, how many guitars do you normally take with you on tour? If I could take only one guitar with me on the road, I probably will. Just for the simple fact it's, you know, it's less to worry about you know, whether it's me or my guitar tech. But that guitar has to be a really good road guitar, meaning it has to stay in tune. It has to never break strings, so I'll put graphite saddles on it. And it just has to be reliable and sound good. Two of the main ones are this LSL T-Bone Tele style. I think you've heard me talk about this. What makes this a good touring guitar is it's light. Graphite saddles, I've never broken a string, knock on wood. I put a humbucker style in the bridge. I know it'll be quiet no matter what kind of power we have on stage and it stays in tune. Another one of my favorites is one that I've had in about 10 years now. It's this PRS single cut. It was called when I bought it before they changed it to uh, the SC245 or whatever. This also has graphite, GraphTech saddles and it stays in tune perfectly. I put Ox4 low wind pickups in these. This one's a little bit on the heavy side, so I won't take it on the road as much as my telly, especially if we're flying. Fat Boys one asked, who is your favorite female blues singer? Uh, of all time, I would say Etta James with Aretha Franklin coming in a close second. If you haven't heard this album, The Delta Meets Detroit, Aretha's Blues, it's like her blues record. It's really, really good. Go 
Check it out. So Tom says, hey, RJ, what's your favorite chord? Some people call it the James Bond chord. I call it E minor major nine. Jay Glenn asks, do you ever practice on or play acoustic guitars professionally? Uh, if so, is the higher action helpful or harmful when going back to electrics? I play acoustic gigs from time to time. You know, in the country music industry, a big part of it is doing shows for radio stations where it's usually all acoustic or, you know, acoustic guitars and maybe a guy on a cajon. In my experience, when you play acoustic for a while and then you move to electric, uh, it's going to feel easier, the strings are going to feel slinky, but I think it's very helpful to learn basic guitar on an acoustic before moving to electric. That way it kind of strengthens your fingers and your hands. It's kind of like lifting weights for your fingers. One thing that you need to be cautious of is your touch. Sometimes when you play acoustic you tend to fret harder or strum your strings a little harder. You don't want to carry over the way you play acoustic uh, to an electric guitar because if you fret the strings and strum the strings the way you would on an acoustic it's probably going to sound a little bit out of tune on the electric. You're going to need to adapt your playing and adjust your touch a little bit to compensate for the lighter string gauge. Alright guys, I hope I answered some of your questions. And if you like this video, click that thumbs up, write me a message in the comments, share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to see more guitar Q&As, gear demos, guitar lesson videos, and music related vlogs, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later.